Hi, I'm Brittany with Condi Systems, and today we're gonna be doing a really cool project. We're gonna be sublimating onto a piece of polyduct canvas, and then later we'll build and assemble a gallery wrap. Today, you're gonna need uh, several tools I brought with me. We're gonna go over that real quick. Also, you'll need your lint roller, Condi Pro Spray, and a piece of protective paper for the actual sublimation portion. Now the tools are a little bit different. I brought several different things. You might not need everything on the table, but it's just so you can have an idea of some of the different variations of what you can use. One of the first things you'll need to do is be able to build your frame. These are actually canvas stretchers. So depending on the size of the canvas that you're gonna be doing with your uh, sublimation, the, the photo itself, you're gonna be able to put these together and build your frame. This is a eight by eight, this is a square. And we bought these at a, like an art store, art supply store. So you'll just want to make sure that you're buying something that's going to fit the size project that you're working with. You'll need a ruler, and this is just to make sure that we have our edges and everything nice and even, that everything's equal before we go ahead and begin the assembly and stretching. The sanding block, this is just a tip. I find it easier. If ever you're working with the wood canvas stretcher, sometimes the corners can get a little rough. So I like to use a piece of sandpaper or a sanding block and make them nice and smooth. You're going to need a staple gun. We have a power, electrical staple gun, or you can do a manual. Either one of those will be able to work. We have canvas pliers. This is for stretching our canvas. You'll see that there's different sizes. Depending on the size of your frame, you may need a smaller set of canvas pliers. Or if you're going to be doing some larger gallery wraps, you might want some larger pliers. And that's just going to be whatever works easiest for you in the size frame that you're working with. Scissors for trimming up edges. And if your staple happens to get away from you, you might want to get a hammer. Make sure that you secure those nice and tight before we actually do all of our cuts and edges. Our first step is assembling our frame. We're going to be putting our canvas stretchers together. Very easy process to do. We're going to use a few staples. We'll go ahead and sand our edges and we'll have a really nice frame. So let's get started. All right, with the first step with the canvas stretchers, this is going to be a little eight by eight frame. I'll go ahead and I'll keep them all so that we can see what we're doing here. The sizes themselves, you'll see that they fit right in against each other and then we're going to have this nice little groove. This is the actual back portion of the frame. And since they do slide nice and easily, they can kind of shift so that's why we kind of want to make sure we, we get it nice and even. And then we'll go through with a ruler and we're going to measure our diagonal, make sure that we have it nice and equal on each side because they do slide just a little bit. So I'm going to measure my diagonals. I'm going to be at about 11 and a quarter on this side. Do the same. Make sure that I'm at about 11 and a quarter. And that's how I know that I am equal on all my sides. I'm going to go ahead and take my staple gun. I'm going to put a quick staple on each corner and that's just going to hold my frame together. And if it's not perfect, you put a, apply the hammer, make it nice and flat. And then I'll go ahead on my corners here. You can see that there's sometimes there's just a little piece of wood that maybe sticks out. Make sure that we get it as flat as possible. Just so that when we wrap the canvas, we don't have any little pieces of wood poking through. And that we're going to have a nice, nice corner to turn and do a real tight hospital corner. And it will make it look a lot cleaner. Now that we've finished the assembly of our frame, we can move on to our sublimation portion. I brought with me the image we're going to sublimate, and you'll notice that my actual piece of canvas is much larger. This is a polyduct piece of canvas. And the reason why it's so much larger is because it's going to make it easier when we go to stretch our canvas over our frame. So you want to make sure that you cut according to the actual image you're going to be using and the frame. I have some Condi Pro Spray, a sticky lint roller, and a couple sheets of protective paper. What we're going to do first is I've opened up my press and we're going to move over to the heat press, grab our piece of canvas, take my sticky lint roller with me, and then I'm going to just very quickly make sure that I remove any excess lint on the piece of canvas. That looks good. Add another sheet of protective paper. 
and we're going to be doing a 30 second pre-press. The pre-press is very important. It's going to remove any excess moisture in the material and it's also going to make sure that any kind of stretching, we're going to be able to eliminate that and we're going to have it the exact same size it will when we go to apply our transfer. So 390 degrees, 30 seconds, and I'm going to be applying a medium pressure. And once we finish with our pre-press, go ahead and we'll sticky lint roll one more time. Make sure we can have a as clean of a substrate as possible. I'm going to get my transfer, lightly mist it with some Pro Spray. I'm going to line it up in the center of my canvas as best as possible just so that I kind of have some extra room to work with on all my corners, especially since we're working with a perfect square today. So we want to try to have it as equal as possible. Add another sheet of protective paper back on top. And we're going to do a press today. It's going to be about 50 to 70 seconds depending on the size of your material. I'm going to use 60. Again, 390 is my temperature and a medium pressure. And that sound means we're done, so let's lift and swing away on our press. Move our top sheet of protective paper. Move our transfer. Let you be able to see. We're going to give this just a few seconds to cool down, and we're going to begin the actual gallery wrap process. Now that my canvas has had time to cool, we're going to actually do our gallery wrap process. So I brought back my frame that we assembled earlier. I have my uh, poly duct canvas sublimated. And you'll notice that I have a little bit more white space on one side than the other. And that's going to be OK because you'll notice that the actual transfer itself was much larger than the frame we're going to use. So as long as I have enough area to work with when I go to pull my canvas nice and tight, it will be plenty, plenty of room. And we're going to trim up those edges. It will still work perfect. What I've brought with me are a couple different canvas pliers. This is so you can get an idea of some of the different sizes. Again, these were bought at an art store or you can even do a hardware store on most of the tools that we have. And really with the sizing of these, you just want to make sure that when you pull it nice and tight that you're able to get in between your frame. So these would almost be too large because it's almost the same exact size as my spacing. And so I'm going to be using our smaller canvas pliers today just so I can have a little bit more room to pull nice and tight. And again, that's going to be just your reference and the same um, with the materials you're using, your frame size, whatever you prefer. I have my hammer. If I have any loose staples or if I want to make something nice and flat in a certain area, I can go ahead and just hammer those in if it doesn't come out perfect the first time. I have scissors for trimming down our canvas. And again, this is going to be more of a preference on how you want to do those, but we'll show you how to make it nice, as clean of a backing as possible when we pull all of our corners. I'll show you just how to, how to trim it and make it look nice. So let's begin the process of actually wrapping our canvas. So what we'll do first is we're going to flip over our image. I can still see the outline. And I'm going to put my frame in the center, make sure that I'm not cutting off any important pieces. Since this is a perfect square, it's going to line up exactly in the middle. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab one side and I'm going to do one staple in the center. One thing to note with the square, it doesn't really matter which side I use since they're all equal. If I was going to do a rectangle, I'd want to start with my longest side first. So what I'm going to do first is just pull on my piece of canvas and place a staple right in the center. And if it's not perfect, Hammer it nice and flat. And we're going to flip it around, grab our canvas pliers. And now this is the actual stretching part. Once I have it nice, oops, make sure I keep it nice and tight. One thing to note, too, is you'll notice that I'm doing my staples long ways. And this is, you're going to want to put your staples in the same way that the 
wood grain is going as a point of reference, so you'll want to be sure to pay attention to that. What we're going to do next, now that I have my center staples, is I'm going to use my canvas pliers. I'm going to pull them nice and tight. I'm going to start and do all my corners first. And sometimes you might want to apply more staples, especially if you're going to be using a larger frame. And you'll just kind of need to use your own artwork as a point of reference and kind of see what's going to pull the canvas nice and tight for you. So they're nice and flat and then what I'm going to do is all this excess fabric, I'm going to go ahead and kind of trim it down to almost the exact same length as my frame. If you want to go ahead and put in extra staples to pull it nice and tight right away, you can do that or even as a finishing on the frame itself, you can go back and you can add extra staples if you so choose if it's going to make it where your canvas is going to look a little bit cleaner. Do the same thing on the other side. And again, this is a smaller frame, so really we only use three staples just to kind of get us started. You may, may need more, and it's just going to be whatever is, is visible to the eye as far as any kind of errors with your image not being held tight enough. One thing before I start on the other side that I wanted to note is that when we're doing the staples right now, You'll notice I'm not going all the way to the edges, and that's just going to be when I go to do my corners. I'm going to do a really nice, tight hospital um, corner, so I'm leaving that spacing out, and I'm kind of staying towards the center with my other staples and keeping them nice and equally spaced. So let's move on to doing our other two sides. Beginning with our other sides, since this is going to be my first pull, I do not need to use my stretchers just yet. This is going to be my first staple. And I want to go ahead and make sure that I have it nice and centered. So I'm going to line it up, make sure that I have my transfer all the way to the edge, even with the grain. And I'm going to do a nice center staple. If it's not perfect, I can go ahead and tap it in with the hammer. Now that we're going to do the, our second staple, I am going to need to use my canvas pliers. And again, this is something that you're going to find at an art supply store. Almost everything else you'll be able to find at a hardware store, but this is a strict art supply tool. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to grab the edge of my canvas, and I'm keeping it as close to the center as possible. And I'm going to pull it nice and tight using my stretcher. Grab my staple gun, and we're going to apply it right in the center. Go ahead and do one of our corners here. Make sure I pull it nice and tight. Grab my staple gun. Do my exact opposite corner. going to do the last stretching side. This is just something that the more you do it, the easier it's going to be. I know that I have room for improvement myself, but it's easier once you start getting the hang of it as far as where you should be applying your staples, how tight you should pull your fabric, where you should put your hands. It's really just one of those things. The more you do it, the easier it's going to be, but it's kind of, if you've never done it before, there's definitely some learning room for you to practice on. 
now that I have my staples in place, these are just my initial staples. Again, if I want to add additional staples in the end, uh, I can do so as well. I'm going to go ahead and do a cut. I'm going to cut my fabric to the same length of the inside of my frame like I did with my other edges. And today, with the scissors that I'm using, they're actually fabric shears. And this is going to help with any kind of flyaways, give it a nice clean edge. Do the same thing on the other side. The corners themselves, they're going to be hospital corners. And I prefer to keep the side tucks, they're going to be two on each side, and I like to keep them with the side of my image. So I have my face facing out, so I'm going to put my sides on these two corners here. So what I'm going to do first is you'll notice that when I pull out my corners that they're almost exactly equal, there's going to be this little spacing here. This is what I, I want to be able to work with. I'm going to have this nice little lap, overlap on my corner, so I'm going to secure this down with a staple. And then I'm going to grab my canvas shears again. Grabbing my corner, I'm going to pull it nice and tight, as tight as possible. And then One more staple. That way it's going to keep it a nice cohesive angle. Do the same thing for each corner. Again, I'm keeping my little lap. This is just kind of a nice little marking tool. It helps keep the fabric together at that nice uh, angle, and then it's going to be able to make it so that we can pull the other corner as like a point of reference for us to pull it nice and tight and work with our canvas pliers. Pull it nice and tight, grab my staple gun, and one, just kind of need to figure out how many staples you're going to need according to how much fabric you have left off. Again, we're going to do some nice cleaning up at the very end, so just something that's going to hold it nice and firm. If you need to add a couple of staples, go ahead and do so. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to apply our hospital corners on the other side using the same method. Put our final staple in our frame. And now we can go ahead and if there's any loose staples, we can tap them in with our hammer. And we can go back and look at the look at our frame, see if there's any kind of weak areas maybe that we want to add a second staple over here. I'm just going to kind of be able to pull it nice and tight just as a finishing thing, just kind of eyeball and see where on your canvas maybe you could pull it just a little bit tighter if you so choose. This is a smaller frame so it's not as difficult as some of the larger frames to keep every single area nice and tight. And then when I'm done I'm going to go and I'm going to clean up all of my edges here. One idea you can, they have tape, if you want to put a finishing tape over your staples if you so choose or you could put a back cloth um, and we'll talk about the actual assembly of the hanging of the gallery wrap next. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean up these edges a little bit and we'll be able to move on and talk about how we're going to hang our gallery wrap. I went ahead and I cleaned up the back, just any kind of fabric that was hanging off. I added a few extra staples just to kind of give it a nice tight clean edge and that was just mostly just visually looking to see if I had any kind of loose uh, canvas on my sides. My hospital corners are complete. Again, it's this, this, uh, this method itself is one of those things that the more you do it, the better you'll be, and the more practice you get, the easier it is to use those tools. But it makes a great, great product. And again, you could customize it. We sell it in the yards so that you'll be able to kind of make your frame as big or as small as you choose for your client. And then the final step when we assemble our frame is choosing a type of mounting unit that you want to use on your frame. This is just a simple wire and eye hook backing. Very easy to do, very easy to apply. You would use the different tools here to make sure that you keep this nice and tight so that when you hang it, it's going to be nice and level on the wall. 
And all of these, they can be found at a hardware store, the art store, um, I'm sure even just a typical retail type store would be able to have some kind of gallery hanging, uh, different kind of units and things for you to use. And you'll want to be making sure that you're going to do it on the size of your frame as well because all of those are going to be weight oriented also. But for more tips, products, and services, be sure to check out our website at condi.com and watch more of my videos at condi.tv.com. I'm Brittany with Condi Systems and thank you for joining us.